Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's July 19th, 2021, and uh, today's video, what I'm going to do is just, there's going to be, this is like a little introduction here, and then there's going to be some video footage of me with my GoPro helmet cam on, and uh, just going from Pond 2 up to Pond 1, going through uh, the driveway set, uh, swale collecting systems, our soil recapturing system, we're, we're not really talking about anything in detail in this video, like the bioremediation or any of those things. But over the last 18 to 20 hours when I shot this video, we had uh, received about 2.36 inches of rain. Now prior to that, uh, our whole growing season since the snow uh, melted, we only had 2 inches of rain. People all around us got rain, but again, we just didn't get that much. And so it really was a huge blessing. And, and it, despite being in a severe drought last year, our property did fairly well. Now some of the plants that we, we trans, some, a couple of the trees that we transplanted that were larger walnut trees had some real shock and we lost one walnut tree. Um, but otherwise, our food forests and our, and our, of course our gardens have drip irrigation, but our food forests have no irrigation in them. And they did extremely well last year. And then we had a m relatively mild uh, snowfall last year. And then the beginning of a drought again this year until we're, we're, and we're still in a drought at this point on this property, but many other places aren't. So one of the things I thought yesterday morning was since we had 2.36 inches of rain over a 18 to 20 hour period, I wanted to talk about water uh, penetration, water retention, water absorption, uh, how we've transitioned, and I didn't go into details on this, but in previous videos you know that this is all gravel here. It's all stone and rock and uh, some places sand. So one of the things that's, that was so important in order to grow our food here and to in increase our resilience is to build soil. And when we build soil, we need lots and lots of carbon. Carbon is what actually retains that water. Uh, so gradually over the years with the hugelkultur pits and then the, the, the permanent raised beds and then the mounds that we grow all of our trees and, and all in, uh, and just keeping as you can see in many of the videos that we've shot over the years, we really grow the plants, the weeds and the grasses real tall and mow them infrequently because of all the photosynthetic properties and, and creating more carbon into the soil. So uh, a book that, that uh, I think is really valuable for those people who are into permaculture, into regenerative agriculture, into uh, food forests, that sort of thing, is a book by Gabe Brown, and I've mentioned him in other videos. And he has some really great YouTube videos online if you just search for Gabe Brown. But he published a book, um, Dirt to Soil, uh, One Family's, uh, what is it, One Family's Journey into into regenerative agriculture. Now he has, uh, he's been ha having beef cattle for many years and he evolves, but it re the book really goes through the process of him being uh, a, a non-farming kid, marrying the farmer's daughter, and then learning many, and being trained in the traditional agricultural uh, uh, means, you know, really plowing the field, thinking that the more that you, you turn that soil, the better it is. Uh, which is the exact opposite of, of what really it, the science shows us, and where he transitions to a full regenerative uh, agriculture. And YouTube videos do, uh, are really good to watch Gabe, uh, uh, you know, give his lectures online. But this book, I think, is really good. It has some science in it. It's toned down. He doesn't, he doesn't, he's not a scientist. Uh, he's someone who is reading scientific articles and talking to professors and applying that information and also steering away from information that's misinformation as well. So I, th I think that book is really worthwhile. But in the video that I shot yesterday, I, I don't know that I did a, really, uh, did a very good job articulating what I wanted to, to, to talk about. And that's really the transition of our soil from all rocky gravel in order to be able to, to grow 
a food, food force in various locations using different mechanisms. And I've talked in other videos the different mechanisms, but I didn't talk about that in, in, in the video footage I shot yesterday that you're going to see shortly. Uh, but it's all about uh, capturing as much carbon into the soil. And, and plants do that for us. They take CO2, they take water, they make simple sugars, the microorganisms in the, sto in the soil build uh, structural net networks, and, and this is a way that we can build uh, soil and build our water retention capabilities. You know, we look at the places out west, west that are drying out. We look at the places the, the, in the, uh, the Midwest and the Southwest where, uh, where they're using the Colorado River to irrigate all of the farmlands and they're still turning the soils and all. These things have to change. Regenerative agriculture, permaculture, these mechanisms, uh, key line design, these are tools that work extremely well and the need for exogenous using pumping water from the aquifer which is going to be a big issue in the future using that to irrigate crops so uh, one of the things i wanted to talk about was geez when you have this much rainfall years ago when i first put in the ponds the hard ground would the, when we'd have the rainfall come down would just run off the surface and we'd have a lot more sediment going into our sediment collecting systems. And, uh, and so we weren't absorbing that moisture into the soil. So when we, when we designed the swales and the berms and the, uh, the high carbon rich soil that we're planting all the, all the trees and the food forests and the bushes and all the rest of the things, creating these guilds, it was very important that we focused on enhancing the creating and growing and developing more and more carbon rich soil uh, through the process. So that's what we, I'm not going to talk extensively about it, but we'll go from pond one to pond, uh, pond two to pond one and then go around and just look superficial. I've done lots of videos on the rest of the, uh, the ponds, the canals, the swales, the the hugoculture pits, the hugoculture terrace, the hugoculture uh, um, decomposition and taking old trees and bushes instead of burning them and building soil with that. I made plenty of videos about those things and large pile composting as well. So taking what many people might consider waste, including paper and cardboard, and creating as much soil as possible, and that's carbon rich soil. And that carbon-rich soil is ideal for not just for our food forests and for our gardens and all, but it's really ideal for water retention and to prevent um, soil uh, loss through runoff and, uh, and or through high winds. So keeping the ground covered is where we're going in the future. We're using weed mats at this point, but as I've talked before, we're going to be uh, gradually progressing towards cover crops and planting into cover crops. I'm still learning the process as well. But um, uh, what I thought I'd share with you is Dirt to Soil, Gabe Brown. There'll be a link in the description below so you can click on it and check out the book on Amazon. You can always Google Gabe, Gabe Brown and read some of his articles or certainly watch some of his YouTube videos as well. So I just wanted to put this little precursor to the to the video footage that's going to show up where we just go from location to location on the property and what I see is remarkable it may not show up in the camera but we've you know although we didn't get a big downpour we had pretty steady rain 2.36 inches in about 18 to 20 hours and no erosion no you know almost n no sign that there was anything until we get down to pond seven and that's where we're using the tarps and i recently did some uh, rototilling down there so um so we you can see what that looks like towards the end of the video so if you have any comments or questions please leave them below i'm always happy to, to see what you folks think as well and i really think checking out gabe brown is a good resource as well so enjoy the video thank you Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's July 18th, 2021, and, uh, and I want to talk to you a little bit about the absorptive capacity of the soil that we've created here on site 
and talk to you about what's changed over the years with our swales, our carbon sequestration, and dealing with a fairly significant amount of rain. Uh, <clears throat> so a little bit of background. Our property is basically all very coarse gravel. Uh, that's what's underneath everything. And gradually we've been developing the property bit by bit over time. And last year we had a very severe drought and uh, and we did our gardens did very very well because they're, they have drip irrigation but we lost uh, lots of water reserves in our swales canals our ponds we had a couple of ponds go completely dry and all and this year we've had had a drought so far we're still not up to uh, normal um, the average water uh, rainfall on this property in Syracuse they're probably well over average now but we just didn't get the thunderstorms that everyone else got up until the last 24 hours our whole uh, spring summer growing season we got just over two inches of rain now that didn't do anything for the ponds downstream so we have seven ponds and uh, and one of the re and that's one of the things I'm going to talk about is why we didn't get our ponds starting to fill up because when you have all the swales and canals and ponds that we have, you would think that with two inches of rain and the large land mass that we have here, that that water would go would would start to raise the pond levels. Well, it wasn't until uh, last night, overnight, and over the last 24 hours, we got 2.36 inches of rain. Uh, it didn't come down as a big downpour. It came down over a 24, well, about a 20-hour period. And uh, so it wasn't a big, heavy downpour at all. And, uh, but you would think if we'd had that much, let's say, uh, 10 years ago when we first put in all the ponds, all the ponds would be filled up and overflowing by now. But they aren't as of this point. So this is pond two, the, uh, the second highest. So pond one is up on the other side of the third food force up here. We're right up next to the, to the second food force here. So this is pond two right here and uh, sometime this morning it finally just hit the berm here and it's going through the spillway. Now our spillway is quite wide here. We have about a 14 or 16 foot wide spillway here. There's rhizomes all in here from irises that help to keep the soil steady and as you can see lots of spearmint that grows right up in here as well. So spearmint has this massive uh, root network and, and the spearmint goes right down the hill. I just mowed it uh, as soon as I got the mower fixed this past week here or earlier this week. What, what day is it? Today's Sunday so it was last week. But you could see a small amount where some water came down and came into our soil collecting system. So it's not much. You can see a little bit of a trickle and this will probably run all day today because water from the swales will work their way through this system and feed into the soil collecting uh, uh, canal system here. And this soil collecting canal system drains from the swales going up the property and works its way down. So the point that I wanted to make uh, is that the absorptive capacity of the soil that we've been building up on the property here has really improved significantly because of the amount of carbon that has been integrated into like here. This is all wood chips here and this is probably oh, about 10-12 inches thick uh, except for right around the trees here and there's wood chips over there as well. So as the wood chips break down uh, that carbon gets brought down into the to the uh, the soil and subsoil surfaces, and that helps with retaining more and more moisture on the property. So this is pretty interesting, just how well, how much of an improvement there is in the amount of absorptive capacity of the soils, and this helps to keep erosion from occurring. Now, certainly, we didn't have any big downpours. But uh, we have swales put in, so this is a small swaleway system here leading into Pond 2 that can drain this area here. Then we have this swale system over here, which goes, which collects from the driveway from that direction and collects from another swale on the other side up by the grapevines over here. And you can see it's a small amount of water in here. 
but with 2.36 inches of rain uh, in about a 20 hour, 18, 20 hour period, uh, it's amazing that these swales aren't fuller and, and there being more of a rush of, of uh, water moving from pond to pond. And the reason for that is the high absorption that there is. So the deeper we, build, we create our soil, even though this is all gravel here, the deeper we create the, the soil, the more holding capacity there is for all the water. So I, I'm not sure that, I want, well, we'll go up and take a quick look at pond one I'm gonna go up and harvest the garlic today. I hate doing it when the soil is gonna be completely soaked up there, but they're raised beds. But it's time to harvest the garlic. So we'll take a walk, a, a quick ride up by pond one. And then we'll take a look at the other couple of ponds as well. So this is roadway here that I'm going up over right now. These are all Jerusalem artichokes and walnuts in here, some black currants as well. There's where the garlic and the shallots were right over there. I'll make a video on this area here. I'm changing a couple of these areas here in, in uh, Third Food Forest. So here's Pond 1. This is a, we're on the peninsula here of Pond 1. And this is still down about almost two feet uh, the level of the water here so it didn't run off of the surface of the soil and run through these small little drainage swales that I have to feed this pond it absorbed into the soil so the more carbon that there is there the more undisturbed roots that we have in this in this soil the more water holding capacity there is in the soil as well. And of course, it does get exceeded temporarily, so there will be small amounts of water in the swale system, but the swale never got high enough to go over and work its way into the pond. So it's just sinking in to the soil of all of the, the, uh, the rich carbon that we've been putting down in, in all of these areas and building up the, uh, the soil level and allowing the roots of the plants to penetrate deep down into the area and bring more soil into the subsoil area. So we'll just go down and go back down pond. We'll actually go down by the soil collecting canal system, I guess. of the garlic beds I'll be working on today. And of course we have the tree lines bordering and the gooseberries and the currants all around here, horseradish as well. Earlier this spring I talked about how I removed the raspberry plants that were down in here. So this is disturbed soil right in here. And we'll go over by the grapevines. I've got to do a little more pruning on the grapevines here, but so I disturbed all this soil because I used to have raspberry plants planted all along in here. But the carbon has been building up more and more each year up in this area because we're allowing the, the plants to grow tall uh, and then mow them off and leave the roots intact and adding more carbon each year.
So basically carbon equals water and this day and age you want to build as much soil as rich carbon as possible. So this is one of the swale systems right here going along this row of trees. And there, there could be, because of the slope here, there could be some water coming down here, but it's just absorbing into all of these areas. These are where all the service berries are, some more persimmons in here. And then the swale here that goes around, and uh, this one drains down into this canal system. And this is our soil collecting system, so we're not even close to being full here with this uh, at max, we're not even close to maximum capacity. We actually are full, but this is our soil collecting uh, canal system. And this allows the bioremediation plants to grow in this area. It creates a, an area that's, uh, that's a, a, uh, a seasonal pool and a, a canal that holds water most of the year. So we're converting organic uh, organic compounds into very simple organic compounds building soil at the base of these uh, soil collecting system here's another swale system so if the gardens get too wet and feed right into this canal system and then this canal system washes over the driveway here right in this location So I think it's about five feet deep right here. And so slowly the, 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 the base of this soil collecting system tapers down. And that's all who culture mounds and a terrace up in that area. So I no longer put mounds above ground. I put all the logs and timber below ground. And then I put the rocks to help hold back. I don't know, you might be able to see. I've, I've got the terraced hugelkultur system. So that's all trees laying on their sides all up in that area with uh, dirt covering that and then wood chips on top of that. All of that helps to retain moisture and the excess moisture and if there's organic compounds that are that are coming from there or other waste products that'll come into here it can turn into algae that's okay uh, it'll get subducted eventually uh, but the water comes down through here goes through this canal system uh, through this swale system here if water were to come too much down the driveway I have a swale system I put in here I have a video on that one and you can hear a small amount of water coming through the block wall down there and it works its way into this bioremediation canal system and this bioremediation canal system goes back over to pond 3 right over there so pond 3 has an island over there and this bioremediation canal system once it gets full and this did not get full until probably around midnight last night and then it started working its way across under the driveway to the next part of the bioremediation system. So we'll just come over here real quick. And these are our asparagus beds right here around the canal. Hardy kiwi here that I, gra that I uh, uh, got from hardwood cutting. And so this is pond three over here. And so pond three is now full. So initially all of this bioremediation canal system works its way into pond three. It's a completely shaded pond and an island here. And then that, that when it gets overly full, the water will work its way back out through this canal system. Still harvesting mulberries over here and cherries are done right now. and water goes through this canal system works down through this canal system and then we have a different form of shading to try and and decrease evaporation we have the lily pads all throughout here and you notice there's marginal weeds all around the sides and those are all part of the bioremediation system as well so this is pond four over here 
And uh, so this just got filled up last night. So it only took a short period of time for this pond to fill up to go up a couple inches. Again, all these ponds were lower in level until uh, about midnight last night. Now we'll go over to pond five here in a second. But as the water works its way down the property, it used to flow, you know, much more rapidly along the, the surface of the ground until we really started building up more and more soil. Uh, you know, it, we, we'd have less runoff and more absorption of water by doing things like this cardboard, paper products, wood chips, and then once we get the plants growing, leaving the roots intact, that can help to bring, bring in more of the microbial communities to help, uh, to, to help with the transition of soil succession, going from a bacterially dominated soil to a, prominently, a predominantly fungally dominated soil. other side of the greenhouse and work area there we have the uh, the swale system I put in a couple years ago that can take any hard runoff keep it on the property work its way around that building and then dump into pond five but for uh, going in series from pond to pond to canal to swale to canal to pond to pond we use some additional under uh, underground uh, pipes. So there's uh, culverts. Here's one of the culverts here. Now this pond is has raised since midnight about uh, four feet right now, and we'll probably get another foot, possibly two feet more. It won't be enough to actually go and start feeding pond six yet. But some of the, this food forest uh, is feeding it when it, when it uh, exceeds its absorptive capacity. But as you can see, the rocks over there, that's where I built a soil retention area there because there's a swell that goes around the greenhouse, works its way down the, by the nursery, and then when it gets full, it overflows right over those rocks and fills up this pond. So that's for big, heavy rain downfalls, downpours, uh, where we can, if it exe exceeds the absorptive capacity, we don't want widespread runoff. We want to control it in our swales. But when we have slower, steady water coming, we want to enhance the amount of absorptive capacity of the fields, the, 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 uh, your lawns, the, uh, the gardens, the food forests. We want to increase the absorptive capacity. The absorptive capacity is enhanced by more carbon and not disturbing the soil which unfortunately I have to do at times. So now we're entering part of the first food forest. So these are some of the Asian pears, the quinces, the red buds, the uh, various peaches and apples, <laughs> the honey hut. But as you can see, gradually I'm trying to get as many wood chips down all in these areas here that's going to be brought down by the microorganisms and the earthworms right down into the lower levels of the soil. So as we build more soil, we're, we, we're increasing the absorptive capacity of the plots, whatever it is, whether it's the gardens, the lawns. Now I disturb soil here,
this is an area that I rototilled. I, I made a video about uh, this is an area that was a that has a big horticulture pit underneath it and it is an area that we had grew raspberries in and mounds and all and the weeds had overtaken so when I bought the big rototiller by the way it sold with the first person who who called about it uh, but it, the rototiller is just our ground is just too rocky down here uh, so this could contribute to soil runoff as a result of it being disturbed soil. I've broken the roots even though there's lots of rich carbon here but fortunately since there's a hugelkultur pit below it all that moisture will go right down into the pit system and some of that pit system will work its way the moisture in the pit system once it gets exceeded it'll work its way through the gravel and start to feed pond six. Now maybe this year or next year I'll be working on pond six here but that's the area where the blueberry beds are going to be going. And we'll go over to the drainage swale, um, the spillway over there at the other side. And then we'll head to pond seven. Got some more rocks to pick up over here. <laughs> There's always something to do on a farm. That's the location we're keeping the hardwood bark mulch. So this right here is the spillway. And the water level in Pond 6 hasn't reached the spillway level. Those are mounds up there. It, this is the lowest spot. We kept it like 24 to 30 feet wide right here so that the water, once it reaches this level, can spill over. And then I have a drainage swale that leads down to Pond 7. But I'll be moving that drainage swale over closer to these trees over here, working my way around it, hopefully in the next month or two, uh, getting this changed and because I want to get this ready for all the blueberry plants, uh, which I've got a lot of work to do to get the soil ready. I did get all the rocks up or 90% of the rocks up from over there, but we'll go over by pond seven now. Got to get that wood split over there and get it stacked. So, Pond Seven isn't full but it's got a lot more water in it. Why? Because I this area here, the, the hula culture beds that were up underneath here are, are still there, but there's tarp on top of it. That tarp decreases the absorptive capacity, so that water ran off of that. Then I have disturbed soil here. So the reason why Pond 7 went up a couple of feet much quicker than the other ponds is because I, de I decrease the amount of absorptive capacity by using tarps and by disturbing the soil here, destroying all the roots. So the water just rushed right off and filled, well, almost filled Pond 7. So this pond, which is the last in the, well, the second from last in the series of ponds from Pond 1 all the way down, if it was, if I had optimal absorptive capacity of the soils in this area, this pond wouldn't be nearly as full as it is, but I decrease the absorptive capacity by the tarps, by, the, by disturbing the soil in here, and that's why this pond is so much fuller than it should be uh, had I not disturbed this soil and this, and this tarp not be here. So in the future, this pond will stay lower because I will enhance the absorptive capacity and therefore the blueberry plants that we plant up in here won't require as much watering. So always keeping your grounds covered, and I'm not talking about with tarps, 
The tarp is my temporary way of controlling weeds, controlling, uh, you know, deposits like when I use a snowblower and all from get, causing weed seeds and all that to get into the gardens. Eventually, I want to get away from all of this and just be using cover crops. Always having the ground covered by living green photosynthetic plants that are putting roots deep into the soil and building carbon. So as photosynthesis occurs, especially the more the the, the taller that the grasses and the plants are, uh, the taller that they are, the more photosynthetic cells that are there, and therefore the more uh, carbon that can be sequestered and deposited into the soil to feed the microorganisms and those microorganisms will start capturing no nitrogen from the atmosphere and, and enhance the ability for us to grow beautiful food for us, beautiful gardens and all. So that's the way of the future and I just wanted to demonstrate the difference. I hadn't been down here yet to see, see Pond 7 but as I, I anticipated this is uh, you know more full than it should be if this soil was 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 done properly uh, and it will be in the future but you know I'm one guy doing what I can do so maybe later today we'll as I get tired from doing all the garlic uh, we'll take a ride down to pond um, to the beaver ponds and see how that's being handled and hopefully we don't have too much of a washout down there so I hope this 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 uh, explains why I'm building as much carbon in the soil as I can and how important the carbon is and uh, how the tarps aren't the optimal way. It certainly is a real good way of making a, diff a difference. Uh, tilling when you need to get the first time in there, we're a minimum till place. I don't really want to be tilling. I want to be having cover crops. I want to put as much carbon into this into the soil as possible and uh, leave the, the, the beds and everything covered with good green growth that we don't have to have the weeds coming in and taking over. That's where we're heading. And so I thought since we had this much rain, I'd share this information with you. Again, if you found this video of value, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, feel free to share the video if you think it's of value to someone else. And by all means, folks, ask any questions or leave any comments. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye now.